Since Godot 4, you can now use first-class functions and signals in GDScript. Why does this matter? 1. It makes your code less error-prone by allowing you to reference signals and functions directly. You don't need strings anymore. So, if you make a typo when writing a function or signal name, you find out straight away. In Godot 3, you would only see some of these errors while running the game and only if you noticed them. 2. It makes it easy to customize nodes by choosing different functions, for example, to reuse the library of tween animations on many nodes. It was possible before, but now it's way less error prone. This video is sponsored by our Godot courses. You can currently pre-order your Godot 4 courses at up to 50% below launch price. If you're still learning how to code, remember to save this video for later. You can learn GScript faster with our free app. It's up to date for Godot 4. So here I have a little game and when enemies die, so when I kill them, I want the score to increase and I want a little uh, cloud to, to appear, right? If I go to my game script, now you can see how uh, when I create a mob, I can directly reference its died signal called the connect function of the signal and then connect to the name of a function to increase score, for example, in the case of the score, without using any quotes. This is uh, one thing that first class signals and functions allows you to do. We're going to see two use cases in this video, but basically this makes it so if I make a typo, uh, Godot will tell me directly as I'm coding, instead of having to wait for uh, running the game, so this is much less error prone. In this example, I have a bullet, and whenever it leaves the screen, I want it to be deleted. To that end, I have a visibility notifier 2D node, which has a screen exited signal that tells me when some node leaves the screen. So in Godot 3, we would uh, first get the visibility notifier node. Here I'm storing it in an onready variable. And then I would connect to its signal in GDScript like so. So I uh, write the name of the node, then connect, and then I would pass the name of the signal to connect as a string, the object to which to connect, and then the function to call when the signal is emitted, there again as a string. This is fine, except that if I make a typo, I don't get any error. We would have to uh, play the game to get an error. In Godot 4, we now have these first class signals and functions. This means that they can be directly referenced, as you can see in this Godot 4 copy of the script you have on the screen right now. Same thing, I'm getting the visibility notifier node, and then uh, the syntax is a bit different. Instead of calling its connect function, I first type a dot, the name of the signal, then the connect function of the signal. And in parentheses, I just need to put the name of the function because it is implied that I'm, I want to call Q3 on this area 2D. And now if I make a typo, Godot will tell me right there while I'm coding in the editor. I will not have to wait for the game to run. So this is a big advantage of having first class functions and signals over using strings. First class functions can make it easy to customize different instances of a scene or a node. Here's an example with a sprite. So I have a dog and I want maybe different instances of this sprite or different sprites to disappear using different pre-programmed animations. So scaling down or perhaps fading out. So for that, I've attached a script to the sprite, and if I open it, I've created a variable called disappear function. It takes a callable, that is to say a reference to another function from my script, for example, and I have reference scale down and hide. So I have two example functions and they work pretty similarly. In both cases, we create a tween, we create an animation, so in scale down and hide, we uh, animate the scale property of the sprite until it has a size of zero over the course of one second. 
we wait for the animation to finish and then we call the hide function to make the dog invisible. In fade and hide, the code is very similar except that our animation animates the modulate property of the node to make the sprite become transparent over the course of one second. So now in my ready function, uh, here's what I'm doing. Uh, at the start, I'm waiting for 0.5 seconds for the video, but I'm just calling the disappear function, the callable that is stored in my disappear function variable. And currently it's scale down and hide, right? So let me play the scene and you can see that my dog scales down and disappears. Now what happens if instead I reference fade and hide in my variable? I'm gonna swap the function here, run the scene, and now the dog fades and hide. This is just one example, but you can imagine how you could use a library of functions that represent animations and assign them to different mobs or different characters in your game to reuse these animations written in code. First class functions make this pretty easy to do. We are happy to announce the rollout of our GoTo4 courses in early access starting January 30, 2024. You will be able to access them directly on GDSchool, our brand new learning platform. Use coupon EARLYBIRD to pre-purchase your GoTo4 course now at up to 50% below launch price. The offer is valid until December 10 only, so share the news if you know someone who could benefit from it.